right, so we have to make it official. Um, this guy's got 835. This guy's got 834. It's not where you need to aim, but I'm just letting you know. It's a little, I think they cheated at this point, but let's see what you got. <laughs> and then we got to try a Do you want to be a fighter? They f***ing pussed out. You weigh 190 pounds. And you're like four foot three. <laughs> You got problems. These guys are all crying about their injuries. They've been whining about how hard this is, and then they quit. It makes me sick. <laughs> I don't give a f Pack your bags. He's fing out. I am blown away, and I don't even know what to do now. Shocked and disappointed. I really think you don't get it. Pack your bags, you're going home. That is pathetic. Guys, shut you the f up so we can get this over with. Thank you. Shut the f up. But you can't ever threaten the production crew here. Do you want to stay here? Yes, I do. You don't want to leave this show, right? No, sir. The last f***ing thing you want to do is get kicked off this show. Also this week, Colby Covington made some headlines. He says, if he said when he beats Kamar Usman, he says, no way he's letting you wrap the belt around him. If you do, he's going to smack you in the head with it. What's your comments on that? Good luck with that. Good luck with that. He's a big mouth f***ing idiot. That's a rough one, yeah. The guys, if you, I heard, I heard he, he's, I a, lo he's a local true. ref, he, he does that a lot. He's a local ref, I heard this guy's a jujitsu black belt, is that true? Yeah, yeah. sure is. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a bad local ref, but he's consistent. He's what? He's bad. If you go to a local fight and he's refing, you know <laughs> something's going to happen. Oh, really? Oh, he, he, he's the Arizona Mazzagatti? <laughs> 100%. Okay. If, if, if the Nevada State Athletic Commission gave a shit what we thought, Mazzagatti would have been gone a long time ago. Um, and, and Nevada State Athletic Commission is be, supposed to be the best in the country. It used to be. It's not anymore. It's not anymore. Let me tell you what. If you've never, that's the problem with Mazzagatti. If you've never been in that fing choke that, that John Fitch was in, oh, he had his arms around his neck, big deal. Yeah. Let somebody who's, who's trained, strong, and has that choke on you the right way do it to you. Have him just do it to you for a second and see how you feel. I'm not talking about choke you unconscious and then keep holding it until he wants to let go. And you see Fitch's arms go dead. You see him go limp. Mazzagotti standing in the corner. Pick up some bread and milk, right? Then what's even, he flips him over and is still on top of him with the choke, flips his head back, then stands above him and goes like this. And then you see Mazzagotti going, is he sleeping? I guess this fight's over, right? I mean, I, you couldn't explain that to somebody unless they'd been choked before to know the difference between the two chokes. Nothing pisses me off more than guys not making weight if, if this is what you really want to do. But bro, you blew it. You blew it. You're out of here. Makes me sick. You guys stay focused. Remember why the you came here. Show everybody these millions of people watching why they want to watch the 155 pound division as a team you guys should have been on this fat ass f two weeks ago drives me f crazy are the pussies and the posers they get here and the f cameras bothering them they get nervous they don't want to fight they don't want to do this and every season it makes me sick to my stomach because i think of all the guys who wanted to be there you guys want to go back and be a f bartender uh, a short order cook a f scientist if that's what you really want to be then go for it but what the f did you come here for? But when you get back out into the real world, you go to jail for that. Bro, you're not even famous yet. What the f are you gonna be like I'm not, when you start making money I'm so, I'm and not. everybody wants your f autograph and all the girls want to hang out with you? What's gonna happen to you? You're gonna be a f lunatic. The bottom line is, you're out, bro. I will always be vocal. I will always say exactly what I think and how I feel about it. I would have to say that I am probably the most vocal promoter on the planet when it comes to officiating. And, and, and I'm not just talking about mixed martial arts, I'm talking about boxing too. If this doesn't get fixed, it just absolutely crushes the sport. 
It's so bad. It's so how just, does it get fixed, Dan? Honestly, how, how does it get fixed? I know they, you say they don't listen to you, but it's your livelihood, too. It's your business. These athletic commissions are put in place to provide judges and referees to be fair, to know what they're doing, to be professional, and uh, to score. It's like, it's like the kick to the body tonight. That was a kick to the body, and Rosenthal jumps in the middle because he thought it was a kick to the groin. Come on, man. You're standing right there. Open your eyes. Pay attention. Pay attention. This is what you're getting paid to do. This is what you do. You choose to do this. If you don't want to do it 100%, don't do it. Go do something else. You know, there's a difference between a kick to the... That could have, the fight could have been ended right there, right? And, and that's a, a situation where he doesn't see it. He stops the action, gets half-assed in there, right, instead of making a clear, decisive decision. And... Uh, what if what if Riddle lost the fight after that, in a, in a point where he could have won the fight because he had him hurt to the body with a beautiful kick, which those are hard to land. You don't see him land it all the time where you actually really hurt a guy, and he jumps in the middle. You know, then Levine. I'm so pissed at Levine, man. Just stands there like a dope and watches these guys clinch on the fence, not advancing their position, not doing damage just standing there for two rounds and then you let him do it for an entire five minutes in a three-round fight are you are you surprised at the backlash that people don't even want to allow you to discuss options and pre-treatment it's it's disgusting it's disgusting yeah it's it's one of the craziest things that i've ever witnessed in my life you know and you're we're, we're talking not talking about um experimental drugs or things that you said this stuff's been around I mean, they got the ivermectin the guy, You're a doctor? Won, the guy won the Nobel Peace Prize. You're a doctor? Huh? You're a doctor? No, but there's plenty See? of doctors there you go. that do... Uh, Here he comes. <laughs> I just asked a question. Are you a doctor? No, but I, but, I, but I took them and they both work for me, so why shouldn't I be able to take them again? Or other people? I won't answer. I won't no, no, come on. Dive in. We, we do have a well, brain why shouldn't to we be able make to take our them? own decisions. Right? You, you want to know what's scary? I bet I could get some fucking pain pills quicker than I could get monoclonal antibodies. No, not maybe. That's a fact. That's a fact. They fucking hand out pain pills like, the, like they're Tic Tacs. Nobody said that was right. Huh? And nobody said that was right. No, I hear you. But, but they keep doing but, it. But you can. Monoclonal antibodies and, and ivermectin isn't going to do anything to you. Pain pills kill you. Fact. And I'm not a doctor, but that's a fact. <laughs> There's no point in having you here. You're obviously too heavy. You haven't been doing the right things uh, to come in and fight at that weight. So you're gone. Junie, what the is wrong with you? Do you want to stay here? Do you want to fight? Do you want to? I mean, yeah. Do you have a drinking problem? Yeah. You do? What the is up with you? Yes, you're sir. a drunken retard, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? If winning this contract is what you want, don't forget why you came here. If you don't want to fight, you came to the wrong place. This is like insane. I want to kill Andy Wang. Hey, you're here to win. I understand that. Did you that. come here to win this show? Yeah, yeah I did. But it's well, like you have an opportunity now to get back on another team. You can go home and do push-ups and cartwheels and off and whatever the you want to do. You're wasting his time and my time and your own time. We're here for 16 more days. Get to work. And I'm disgusted. You guys acted like a bunch of little kids last night, like high school bull, man. You're gone. You're gone. And Lobster, you're gone. You three are gone. Pack your boys. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. It's my way and no other way. End of story, you know. As a result of this and other decisions, is it fair for you to say that Keith Kaiser is doing your state, Nevada, a disservice as commissioner, that he's not doing his job? <laughs> Ariel, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you answer that on you answer that question. Would you say, Ariel, would you say that Keith Kaiser is doing the state of Nevada a disservice by keeping Mazagati in there? Yes. Okay. Well there you go. But Stupid no no one wants to hear it from me. It no one wants to hear it from me. No. All right, let's get the show started. The reigning, defending, 155-pound champion of the UFC, the notorious Conor McGregor. Ladies and gentlemen, the reigning, defending, 155-pound champion of the UFC, the notorious Conor McGregor! Ladies and gentlemen, 
You're not gonna disrespect me, but I don't know what the f everybody thought they were coming here for. Big deal, the guy sleeping next to you f stinks. He's drunk all night, making noise, and can't you can't sleep. It's not all f signing autographs and banging broads when you get out of here. It's not. And I'll throw you the f out of this gym so f fast your head'll spin. It's so f ridiculous that these guys don't show up on weight. Season nine, mother f season nine. If you don't know what the f goes on in this show by now, I don't even know what to tell you. What do you not understand about that? This ain't Survivor and Vote him off. Beat him off. That didn't sound good, did it? <laughs> Whenever you build something great, it's always surrounded by negativity. When you're in a business like us, the level of scumbags that are in the media, it's, it's unexplainable. I mean, it's going on right now. You have these scumbags out there that know nothing about the nothing about the business, telling all the fighters, "Oh, you're all being underpaid. You're 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 not being paid enough money. You're not this." It goes on every fucking day, and every one of those, every media member that talks about fighter pay, is a scumbag who is basically just out there trying to get attention, because they literally know nothing about the business or the pay or how any of this shit works. So it's just, it's all part of the game. It's just, that's who they are and that's what they do. And I literally could give a fuck. The idiot Gary Shaw actually does an interview with the LA Times, okay? And he says that, you know, we didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with paying a guy to stand up. You know, we got no problem doing that. Yes, you scumbag, there is a problem with that. Think about this, Mandalay Bay and the Venetian both had betting on this. You, the consumer, the mixed martial arts fan could go in and bet on this fight, okay? Now, anybody that's going to bet on, on this fight is going to think, well, if Seth Petrozelli can get him to the ground, the fight's over. So I'm going to bet, take a chance that Seth's going to get him down and, and submit him. But you don't know the scumbag promoters behind the scenes went in and paid him to not go to the ground. They paid him to stand up. You know why? Because they thought that Kimbo Slice was going to viciously knock him out. But Kimbo Slice sucks. Like I've said now for the last few months, this f***ing guy can't fight and he got knocked out in 13 seconds by a guy who didn't win the Ultimate Fighter and who didn't win fights in the UFC. They brought him up from the undercard to fight the main event guy and knocked him out in 13 seconds. It would be like the NFL, okay? There's a game between the Patriots and the Browns. The NFL uh, goes into the locker rooms and tells the players, listen, the Patriots pull higher ratings if they make it to the playoffs and to the Super Bowl than the Browns do. So here's what we're going to do. The Browns have a great running game. We're going to pay your team more money if you just pass tonight. Don't run. Because we need the Patriots to win and make it to the, to the next level. That's f***ing illegal. You mentioned the other day on Instagram you have a surprise waiting for the Pirates in the sport. Do you yeah. mind giving us a little hint what that is? We've been, we've been one of the... Uh one of the leagues that has been so proactive on piracy. And I love how, how cool and tough these guys act on social media. Because let me tell you what, we've caught a lot of people. And let me tell you what they do. They cry and they, they cry. They cry and they beg uh, not to be prosecuted and, and all this other stuff. So um, we just, we, we just uh, overcame a huge hurdle in, in the piracy world. And... We're gonna we're gonna catch some of these guys in in, in twenty twenty one and I look forward to the crying and the and the begging and uh, you know, we'll see how, how tough they are when they get caught. Taking it personally by any chance? Not at all. I'm just saying, listen, you're a criminal. You're a criminal and you wanna you know, now now I got guys I love this one. Listen to this one. There's a guy right now who literally, after I said this thing, so if you go through my, my, my Instagram mm -hmm. and look on all the comments, there's a guy saying, DM me if you want to get the fight this weekend. He's stealing people's information. So people that are DMing him, he's stealing their information. He's taking your money from your bank and charging your credit card. These guys are fucking scumbag criminals. That's Don't listen to them. 
That's fucking illegal. Exactly. That's fucking illegal. These guys are scumbags. They're criminals and they're bad guys. DM them. See what happens. I love it. <laughs> I enjoy your reaction to you. Dane, I just want to ask you, like I said, I mean, this is a huge pay-per-view event to kick off the year. Uh, you kind of stirred the pot a little bit with the, uh, the piracy, the online streamers. They, they want to come after you and, yeah. and give this thing away. So oh. any, reg any regret? No, it kind no, of made no, me stir no, the no, pot no. a little bit? I'm glad you asked me about that because um, we got one. We got him. We're watching this guy right now. All you have to do is turn it on on Saturday, and we got you, f***er. I can't wait. Turn it on on Saturday, streamers, and see what happens. Thank you for asking me that question. We know you were going after uh, the pirates, the, the, the illegal streaming. Any, any news on that? Yeah, part? so let me tell you that story. It's my phone. So, the, um, the night that, 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 I guess it was, uh, I did an interview with BT, and then uh, I did the, I think you asked me at the press conference, right? And, you know, I basically said, this is what's going to happen. So, and I told you guys that we, we, we found the guy and we were watching him. He put out a statement that night. Said, I, want, I will not be streaming the McGregor versus Poirier anymore, but I will show you how to buy it legally. And put out this huge statement and now his whole streaming service has been deleted and is gone. Disappeared. One down and a shitload to go. <laughs> and I'm ready. I'm, uh, every event, I'm going to go after one of these guys. One of these. Or more. We'll see. Last thing for me, we, we didn't get to see you after the weigh-ins. The whole And who you are, guy that did this. Good move. We had you, pal. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know if he knew something or, or, or what, but we had you, and all you had to do was pop up that stream. And Earlier in the week, Oscar De La Hoya was here and kind of personally attacked you and your business, Dana, and also essentially saying you don't take care of your fighters. Right. One of the examples he brought up was Chuck <clears throat> Liddell, and I know that one especially irked you. You know, it's like I say, it's one thing to lie amongst your friends or whatever, but to go on ESPN and lie. Uh, I talked to Chuck Liddell last night. Chuck Liddell told me, it's absolutely not true, that he's making more money over there than he made in the UFC, which, I mean, I think everybody who has any common sense knows. Um, Oscar De La Hoya is lying about how successful the show was. And listen, it happens. This is the guy's first show. You know, he knows nothing about the sport, doesn't even try to know anything about the sport. Anytime Oscar De La Hoya wants to sit down with me face-to-face -face and go over numbers on events, I'll even use my no the numbers off the Toronto show. Not like I'm going to come at him well, with Connor and Khabib. We, we, we can do that any day of the week. The difference is I'm not going to come on ESPN and lie. Listen, Stephen A., the guy's a moron, okay? And any day he wants to go head-to-head -head with numbers with me and talk about the business or even talk about the business of mixed martial arts, how much money is he going to uh, reinvest into the sport? Um, we've reinvested millions and millions of dollars to build this sport globally. How much has he reinvested into the sport of boxing? The answer is zero. In boxing, every fight is like a going out of business sale. These guys are trying to grab as much money as they can and, and, and get out of Dodge. Hey, come on. Move it. You want, I, I like this seat. I like it better. Steven Espinoza uh, alleged that you guys have a clause in the contract that means you can take away the fighter's money if they say disparaging things about the company. Uh, I just wanted you to hear your reaction to that. Say that again to me. Steven Espinoza tweeted that you guys have a clause in your contract that could take the fighter's purse away if they say something negative about the company. I just wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. That's not true. First of all, th there's, there's something in the contract for disparagement. Right. There's a disparagement clause in there that's in all of our contracts. Isn't that creepy looking little f a lawyer? Isn't that creepy little f goofball a lawyer? Does he not know what disparagement means? If you disparage the company, I'm not even a f lawyer and I know the answer to that question. Yeah, it's disparagement. It'd be like if you came out and said, they never tested me. The UFC never tested me for the coronavirus. 
But if you came out and had something critical to say about the testing that was true, that wouldn't be disparagement. Cool. Uh, tonight it was announced that Amanda Nunes... What fucking law school did he go to? <laughs> uh, I can't stand that fucking creep. Anyway, if you couldn't tell, go ahead. Is that based from the Mayweather-McGregor stuff? Is the what? Is, do you d dislike him because of Mayweather-McGregor and the interactions you He's have? He's just a Look at him. The creepy little dude. Yeah. Uh, Amanda Nunes versus Felicia Spence. What the fuck does he know about our contracts? <laughs> oh, you just hit me out of left field with this thing. Oh, what does that guy know about our contracts? And if you do, you're sp I thought that guy was a lawyer. Wasn't he De La Hoya's lawyer? I don't know either. Whatever. Question for Dana over here. Okay, Dana. I, I've heard you say, and I've heard Jeff Davitsky say, I heard Andy Foster say that you guys are 100% sure that this is not a new ingestion, that he didn't re ingest anything. How do you know that for sure? That's a question for Dana. Oh, you, wh yeah. wh what's the question? Sorry. I, I heard you and Jeff Davitsky say, and Andy Foster said it as well, that you are 100% sure that this isn't as a result of a new ingestion. This is the same metabolite that was in his system back in July of 2017. The question I don't seem to find the answer to is how do you know that? Because that's what the experts are saying. The experts are telling us that's what they do. Okay, so how, how else would I know? Okay, the okay, experts I, are telling and us. And I don't expect you to know, but who, right, are, thank the you. who are the experts? Ask Nowitzki. Call Nowitzki and set up an appointment to have an interview with him. He'll tell you. Ariel, I can, I can, help, I can help you with that. You know, you probably can't, actually. You, you, let Nowitzki answer that question for you. I would, I would love Nowit to. Nowit Nowitzki's the expert on that. John, John Jones call, is calling it a pictogram, for Christ's sake. Okay? Unfortunately, uh, he's not here. I don't here. think he can answer that question. So talk to Nowitzki. Okay. He's also said that there's 12 to 14 other cases of this happening. Yeah, you got to talk to Nowitzki. If you want to talk drugs, talk to Nowitzki. When you have a somewhat professional fighter um, threatening to assault a 50-something-year-old <laughs> man who is not a fighter, do you have paperwork for that? Or are there attorneys that need to have conversations now? Or how do you respond to that? Let me tell you what. Get in line. There's plenty of people that would like to assault me. Get in line. <laughs> it's a long fucking line, buddy. You're going to be waiting for a while. No, it doesn't bother me. This is the business we're in. I say it all the time about the fighters too. We are not in the nice guy business. It's a very mean business. I say many mean things about people too. And uh, it's just part of this game. It's all good. Jorge, yesterday at the hotel, there appeared to be a run-in between yourself and Kevin Holland. I was curious, what was that about? Absolutely nothing. You know, there's, there's nothing to talk about there. It's just some riding, cloud-chasing bitch, you know, so ain't nothing to talk about. Nah, that's not what you were saying yesterday, bro. Watch your f***ing mouth. Kevin, I'm curious, what appears, what is the issue there? I called him wait, baby wait, girl and he got mad. Like, guys, come on, these two aren't even fighting. Knock it off. All right, okay. Well, what, do you have a question about the fight, who these guys are fighting, or you just want to start shitting here? And I'll ask you, uh, given what we know about what happened yesterday, do you think that Kevin's focus isn't entirely on you? And do you think that if he's looking past you, it'll hey, really don't be e don't even answer that question. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> WWE, UFC merger, one umbrella. Past or present, professional wrestling. If you could take one person with a steel chair to the skull, who would it be? Or UFC fighter, wrestling ring. No comment, I'm trying not to get in trouble. Thank you. Any other stupid questions? Right here. So, Stipe Miocic versus John Jones hasn't come to fruition for 272 or 282. What's going on right now with Stipe? I heard last week, Media was saying that Stipe might never fight again. What's right. going on with Stipe Miocic yeah, right now? Yeah, I don't know. And, and that's, that's, that's true. He might. That's a true from negotiations you have with him? It might not? He doesn't want to fight no more? No, I'm... <laughs> no, I didn't say that. You said that. You kind of said that. Yeah, uh, I see where this is fucking going. <laughs> no, I did not say that. Yeah, maybe he won't fight. Maybe he will. I don't know. So there's a chance Stipe Miocic... <laughs> Never fights again and is a fireman. I, I have no idea. So yeah. if we what scrap... What the fuck are you asking me right now? You're like I'm, double I'm, talking. I'm, we're going heavy to make it sound like I said that. I didn't say that. I said, but yes, that could happen. That could possibly be. No, no, no. But that could be anybody. 
any of these guys could, could never fight again. You I know mean, who said it? Your least favorite media member. Oh, that's got to be true. He, that's who said it. So okay. what's going on with the heavyweight division right now? We got Ngannou's coming off a knee injury. We got Jones maybe in the wings. Stipe in the wings. What's going on? Who's the next heavyweight championship title fight? Yeah, uh, I think that John, John Jones will be the next fight at heavyweight. Um, He's not a champion. I know. So who's he fighting? Well, hopefully Francis. Okay. So Stipe's out right now. <laughs> do you have any other questions? I do. What's okay. going on with Colby? I Col can't wait to hear this one. Colby versus Kamzat. Do yep. you have anything going further on that? We're working on that, too. Yes, that, that, that fight is being worked on. Do we have a potential, a potential date for that fight? No. Okay. And then, so, great card tonight. You Thank you. killed it in MSG. What comes next after MSG? Like, what's your next big card? Is Vegas. It Vegas? Yep. Vegas all day? Vegas. What's the next one? December. Okay, so are we, I feel like we're missing a Coleman event for that fight. Okay. I'm sorry you feel that way. No, Jerry <laughs> versus Glover. I hear you. So what can you give us on the heavyweight division right now? <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> Where, where Give me something from? good, Dana. Who are you? Who do, who do you write for? Stan the Man, Menace and the Man, Dennis Bermudez, your old yeah. boy. Oh, okay, okay. Got it. Do you have any more questions for me? Well, right now, the heavyweight division's <laughs> wide open. Yeah. All right, well, we'll get it figured out. Are we just waiting for Ngannou? Um, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to play out. Listen, we've been very patient in this whole thing and trying to get something done with them, and, and uh, we'll see the, how this thing... Ends up. I Dana. hate to be this guy. The news that broke today was Nganu said the negotiations are not going well. Okay. Well, that sucks. This is for you, Dana. All right. So, there's something interesting happened in the lightweight division. Obviously, Gaethje or Chandler are going to want that shot, whoever wins. But Islam Makachev, he wants a shot too. Now, have he's Habib's protege. Will he get the so called Dana White privilege? And have you consulted Habib on this? If so, and what was your last conversation like? Is that my question? That's to you, Dana. What did, what did you ask me? I heard Dana White privilege. That's all I heard. But will Islam hey. Makachev get the so-called Dana White privilege over Gaethje or Chandler for the lightweight time? What the fuck does that even mean? I, I don't even understand what that means. That sounds like some bullshit to me. It might be, but yeah. it's a fair question. Have you talked to Habib about it? Is Islam getting the next shot at the title? Is that the question? Over Gaethje or Chandler, whoever wins. Because one of them are going to want it. He's ranked number two in the world. Right. He's going to... What, what are you, five? Two and five? Four. Four. Two and four are fighting on Saturday. And he's been f***ing tested lately? He's he hasn't never, fought anybody. But he's never lost. He's never lost. In his career. He, he, oh, since fights. he's come back, since the Pride days. Listen, if he was still fighting the caliber of fights from the Pride days, I wouldn't argue with you one bit. Right. He is so f***ing far from being the, uh, the best. Do you have him? Huh? Would you put him top five? He hasn't fought anybody. The thing that you have to understand is if you take a guy he's like never Anderson, lost, ever. Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, BJ Penn, um, uh, uh, any of the guys that are in the top tier in the heavyweight, they're fighting the best fighters in the world three yeah. times a year. That's why I think GSP... Well, he's been tested with Fitch. Well, he, you just it. said, well, Anderson Silva was hurt. He's been out. GSP was just hurt now for a while, too. Yeah, but... This guy hasn't lost. Fun. He just broke the record for, for most wins in the UFC, for most title defenses. He's got... Uh, yeah. He's moving up and down in two different f***ing weight classes. Do you think George St. Pierre could go up to 85? I don't even want St. Pierre to go to 85. Why not? Because he's a huge f***ing star, and I don't want to see him go yeah. to 85. He's doing just fine at 170. Anderson Silva, I believe he can go to 85 and could compete at heavyweight, too. He's that fast, that talented, and that he is, he is. Pound for pound, I, I just, best fighter in the world, boxing, <laughs> pinochle, any other guy can put out there, he's right. the best. I don't know how anybody can <laughs> debate that. It's crazy to What's me. the GSP fight? And Was anybody can put Fedor in the number one pound for pound in the world spot, it just makes no sense to me. It has nothing to do with the politics of him not being in the UFC or whatnot. I think but how can you give him the respect when he hasn't fought the guys? I mean, these guys are fighting three times a year, the best fighters in the world, but you're going to give him the respect? I just, I just, 
makes no sense. It, I think it does. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> makes no sense. It does. Because also, I don't consider, like, in ding, the middle, ding, ding, middle ding, 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 right now, like, <laughs> yes, okay, so Silva went up to fight James Irvin. The Forrest Griffin thing was one of the most amazing, you know, spectacles I've ever we seen. We have it in slow but motion where he slips yeah, he his only landed jab, one he only slips his one right touch. hand, goes away from the hook, and then throws, who the does that. But I don't think so. Nobody does that. that. Like, I mean, it's 1A, 1B, 1C. I'm not saying there's a huge discrepancy in the guys, but I just I'm I looking at these little factors. Listen, there's no doubt. George St. Pierre is the number two pound for pound fighter in the world. I think Anderson Silva is number one. I'm just going crazy on you because you got <laughs> Fedor number one and, and you got Anderson Silva number I was three. I'll you up for That's the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, go!